So you got a public performance license to read a book at a public setting. Does this then give you the opportunity to also record this and put it on YouTube? We recently did a video discussing this, but we're going to dive even deeper in today's conversation with everybody's favorite IP entertainment lawyer, Tony, to find out more. My name is Tony Ilikasas. I'm an adjunct professor of entertainment law and IP at New York Law School, and I have an Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok account called The IP Professor that is dedicated to all things intellectual property. Tony, we recently did a video where we discussed making sure we have the proper licensure if we want to read books on something like YouTube versus reading books in a public space. And somebody asked the question, if you have a public performance license, does that give you the liberty to read any book you want on YouTube? So talk to us. So uh, public performance licenses are going to vary depending on who you work with, but odds are when you get a public performance license, it's going to be for a specific dedicated book, a specific dedicated project. It's going to be narrow and focused. That's essentially where I'm going with it. And I think that that's generally speaking, the landscape of licensing as it is, um, you, you know, and put, to put this specific example to the side, think about, let's say Warner brothers, um, licensing, uh, let's say a Taylor Swift song for an upcoming rom-com or something like that. Typically, they're going to work with whoever is the copyright owner of the Taylor Swift song in question, whether you know, you're talking about Big Machine Records or her uh, new representation over, I believe, at, uh, uh, oh man, I'm blanking on, I'm blanking on my music uh, knowledge this, these days, but whoever, whoever her record label is, contacts them, gets the permission, odds are that license agreement is going to be specific to that specific rom-com trailer. That does not mean that Warner Brothers can now take that Taylor Swift song and put it on the Barbie and the next Barbie trailer or put it up against uh, an upcoming uh, Warner Brothers film uh, in two years from now, another film here and there. Each license is going to be used for each specific use. That is the general nature of it. So um, when you get a public performance license, it's going to be for a very specific use for a very specific project, and it would be laid out essentially in the black and white of that contract. It would lay out what and what manner you're using that specific, uh, you know, book reading or book for. What specific type of book reading is it for? Is it for a museum? Is it for a library? Is it going to be for a social media, you know, charity a thon or what have you? That is going to be all laid out in the contract. If you want a broader use, you ask for it. That means likely you're going to have to pay a higher price tag for it because the broader your li br the broader your use is, the higher the license fee is going to be. That's always been the case again across the licensing mm -hmm. industry, no matter what type of license you're talking about. But generally speaking, that's where kind of the buck stops with with public perform performance licenses. If you're unsure about what permissions you exactly have in your public performance license, and contract legally scares you know scares you to death, contact a lawyer have them help you read the contract so that way you can get an understanding and, and bear some sense of knowledge of what exactly you got permission for. And if you want more, you can go back and ask for more. But odds are that whatever public performance license you got is going to be pretty narrow in scope. So it's important to make sure you understand the contract that you are entering into, that the terms have been spelled out very clearly so that you know how you can and cannot be using it. And if you have any questions at all, talk to your lawyer. They are the best resource you have to keeping yourself legally protected inside of this space and make sure that you are working very uh, strategically with the copyright holders of the books that you are going to be working with so that you are very clear on what you can and cannot do. And if you have a specific use in mind, make sure it is spelled out in your license so that you can be doing this properly and you don't have any issues with this. If you've got further questions, go ahead and drop those down below because Tony is here to keep us legally protected inside of the publishing space. And as always, you can reach out to Tony on his social media. Tony, where can everybody find you? You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at The IP Professor. And you can check out my entertainment law podcast called End Scene with new episodes dropping every Friday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Drop your legal questions on the publishing industry because Tony's coming back for upcoming episodes and every single day we drop brand new videos to help you navigate the world of publishing, your writing, your publishing, and your marketing endeavors to make this your most profitable year ever, plus great behind the scenes on the publishing industry for somebody who's been in this industry for a really long time. We'll see you in the upcoming episodes and drop your questions now.